Hi folks, welcome to the blacksmith shop. We've been out for about a month or so, but we wanted to show you what we've been up to. We had some repairs that needed to be done to the bellows, and I'm going to kind of walk you through that, but I'm going to be moving some things around here too as well. I'm going to show you a little bit, if we can, down in there, and I'll shine a light. This big chunk of steel, or cast steel, uh, is called a twir, and it's um, what the bellows blows through, and it ne necks down the uh, the air and makes it more compressed, and it comes out a smaller hole than where it goes in in the back. So it compresses the air and makes a good forceful air supply. So that is the twir. It probably weighs 40, 50 pounds. Uh, the hole in the back is bigger than that, and so. The nozzle, and we're going to show you that in just a second, the nozzle of the bellows goes up into that tapered hole and wedges itself, and thus it more or less seals itself off so that we got a better, more efficient air supply. Uh, let's, look, let's look back here at the bellows. <clears throat> now we, let me just show you a, a, real quick, I'll get in the way, but um, I'm going to stir up a little dust, but I'm going to, because this thing really got a lot of air going. So the way this works is I'm operating the bottom lung, and the bottom lung forces air into the top lung through a separate valve, an air valve. It's a simple flat valve. So when, when I operate the bottom, it literally inflates the top, and as long as there's air in the top, gravity pushes down on the top of it and forces air. Do that again, just one more time, out. so I can see it. Okay. I backed up so we can see the arm. There we go. So the the bottom forces air through the middle. There's a valve in this solid board, and it inflates this part. And so when it lifts up, just by pressure, it always has pressure on it that's going out the nozzle into the fire. Mm -hmm. into the forge. So just gravity is what forces this down and pushing air out. And let's turn a light on. Um, right now we just got that propped up on a brick so that the bellow sits rather le uh, level. And in the back, yeah, you can see the back of the twir and the nozzle is in the hole there and it goes up in there and wedges and pretty well seals itself off. We'll see the back light. Stay right there. Keep that light right okay. there. So you can see that this chamber or this this open area of the forge is meant for just such a purpose. So in other words, we can mount the bellows to an absolutely stationary fixture such as the, the forge that's meant to, to be to last for decades and longer. Uh, whereas this part, this part right here is a cavity that's left intentional and we, we that gives us the, the opportunity to put the different parts together and adjust them and get them just right. And then we pack potter's clay and pieces of brick around that and it's a sacri sacrificial part. Thank you Robert. See Robert has been working on this potter's clay and he's getting it into a consistency that we can pack it and some um, brick chunks together within that hole and fill that up. Um, and that will cure and more or less harden. And it'll take a week or maybe even two. We're gonna give it a week and we're gonna check it next Tuesday and just see what kind of condition is it in. Is it ready for us to build a fire? When it is ready, we're going to fire the forge and we're going to cure this even more and we're trying to prevent cracking and breaking and chipping and spalling and things like that. But this will solidify the connection between the twir and the, the bellows so that um, we've got a good efficient machine. We've got a good forge. So that creates the connection between something that's more flexible to something that's absolutely rock solid and we're using an old uh, technology to do that, and which is traditional. And this thing is a very, very efficient um, forge. Or it's air firing water. 
That's right. There's the earth in your hand. This is the earth and the fire and the water. Here you go. I'm going to chunk that back at you. There we go. Yep. Robert's kneading that uh, potter's clay. So he's adding a little bit of water, kneading it, and getting it ready. One thing about this that you may not know, this looks like a solid big table, uh, but the forge is, the historic forge is actually a hollow box of brick all the way to the ground. All the way to the ground is hollow. And what we've done uh, is filled it with rubble. And technically, rubble is the mixture of dirt and brick chunks or rocks or things like that. But we use brick because brick has already been fired. It will withstand heat. If we use certain kinds of stone or rock, it may explode if it gets hot. So we, we try to avoid that and just use the brick and the soil, dirt. And again, that combination is called rubble. But what that also does for the forge, since there's a, a hot fire, and we, uh, we have to have the hot fire to do our work, but that hot fire is centered right here. But that rubble uh, provides expansion and contraction within the box, within the box, so that there's no pressure on the brick box. So that expansion and contraction during the day or over time, over the years and decades and the centuries, this rock solid uh, forge, the chimney and the box is going to be preserved and it's going to be used for a long, long time because of the way it's designed and because of that expansion and contraction capability that it has. So that, that can all be changed. But what we've done is filled it up and we've leveled it off right to this level and we took another, some loose bricks and made a table right here. That, so it just looks like a solid table, a solid laid up brick table, but it's not. It's, it's laid up on the outside only. The inside is just filled with rubble. And so we can adjust this, this part right here, the, the fire pot. We can adjust it any way we want to by moving the rubble and the brick. We can make a longer trench if we need to. We can make a wider one or we can have a real small one. But it constantly has to be cleaned out because the ashes will fall down and they'll start interfering with good operation of the forge. So we do that every day. Every day that we use the forge. But we're not going to actually fire it up today. We're just going to continue on with the potter's clay and get it in preparation for next week. But uh, we, we've had several people in it. Um, the, the logistics of getting this bellows out and repaired and back in is quite a trick. Um, we've had a lot of help. We've had so many, Tim, Robert, James, Casey, myself, and uh, James Stevens and um, so, so many that have been in support. And so today is kind of a, we're having a little bit of a celebration uh, for getting that forge back in operation. So we're, we're past the danger point, we think. The, uh, the bellows works really well. You want to bring over here and yeah. just kind of look at the, uh, you may not can see the air, but you might can see the yes. effect you can see the effect in the light. It's it's really it really blows well. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of force right there. Lots. So we've got a good efficient airflow. Um, we we got good leather on there. It's been treated several times. Uh, so we're ready. We're ready and excited. So we just wanted to share that with y'all. And uh, we're going to probably, below this post, we're going to post photographs of the whole thing throughout. So we're going to be adding lots and lots of pictures. We've got probably way too many. <laughs> you're going to get tired of seeing pictures, but you're, you need to see kind of what's involved. Mm -hmm. And this has been going on for like three weeks. This, I think this is the third week. Um, so... And, and that doesn't involve the time that we were actually down and using a uh, portable forge here, probably a couple of different weeks. 
and then there was some sickness. So we had some, some uh, holdups in our normal activities, but we're back. And we want to let y'all know it. So thanks again for being patient with us. Uh, and for, we'll sign off now and and get completed with this. And uh, and we just wanted to share that with you. So for the Historic Arkansas Museum, I'm Lynn Ray. Thanks for joining us this time. We're glad you're back. And then I'm going to do something we don't normally do. Check out all the guys that helped us. We had a huge hand. Yes, we did. And these are not all. And this is not everybody for the whole no. three weeks. But we're going uh, to uh, enjoy a, a good lunch and a little bit of association. and Get, get our hands dirty put, putting in potter's clay. That's right. So, Robert, you ready? Yep. Okay. We'll see you all later. Good to see you all again. <laughs>